Hi everybody! Tonight we are taking part in a live festival called Light of the Infinite Festival and it's really amazing. People from all over the world are tuning in tonight so it's really exciting and if you want to go check out after this you can check it out on lightoftheinfinite.com slash best. It's in the caption below. And for those of you who are here on the live from the festival, you we probably have never met before, so I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Shira Jacobson, hi. And I was born and raised in Laguna Beach, California, and I moved to Jerusalem, Israel around nine years ago, Baruch Hashem, thank you Hashem. And thank God it's been a really fun adventure and you can actually join me on virtual adventures. I made an Instagram account and um, it's like a channel now that like, thank God a lot of different people from around the world are joining the virtual adventures that we take throughout Israel. So if you're interested, you can go check it out. It's called The Shira Show. And um, Baruch Hashem, I enjoy. Sorry, one second. Erez, it's me. Sorry, I just got a message from Erez, the person who's in charge of the festival. Shout out to Erez. Thank you so much for making this festival possible. And it's really, really a pleasure to be a part of it. So thank you. Bezrat Hashem. May we bring out a lot of light in this world in the merit of this amazing online virtual festival. So, um, so. Today we're going to speak about holy tech and what does that mean? I'm going to take you on a little journey. So first of all, I want to explain what I love most. I love, first of all, I love Hashem most, but I also really enjoy and love social media and I use it for so many amazing projects that I do on the daily and I am a consultant and I help people with their social media and marketing to grow their businesses, to grow their brands and to really get more in touch with their own vision and what they want to accomplish in this world, which is really exciting. And I know it's an unpopular opinion to say that you love social media in 2022 because it's, you know, it can get a little bit addicting, a little, a lot, but I thank God I have learned how holy and how beautiful social media is if you use it correctly and if you make sure that you that it works for you and you're not working for your social media. So um, today, sorry. <laughs> so today I want to really highlight how holy social media and how holy technology actually is. And first of all, the main focus is that social media is an actual tool to bring about the gila, the redemption. It is the prophecy of the redemption coming to life in our day and age right now. And how do we know this? Because um, if you guys are familiar, there's the the amazing story about when God created the world initially, he created the world in a way that it didn't have any vessels to contain his infinite light, which is very apropos because we're part of the infinite light festival. So initially God created the world and put all of his infinite energy and infinite light into the world and the world did not have any vessels to contain his infinite light and what happened? Shvirata Kalim happened. All of the things that were inside the world broke because they could not handle God's unlimited infinite energy and power and everything shattered and all of the sparks of God's light were fragmented and they, they didn't have a space to be held. So God went back to the drawing board and he created this world that we're in right now, which is called the world of Tikkun. Oh, by the way, the world, the previous world was called Tohu, which is literally, it means chaos. So this current world that we're in right now, God created proper vessels that could contain his infinite light appropriately. And this world is called Tikkun, which means repair and fix the act of fixing. So in essence, what we are dealing with in this world, whether we realize it or not, 
it is kind of like a very interesting spiritual game that each of us are players in. We are like spiritual voyagers and we have this goal of finding the sparks of God's unlimited infinite light that was from the world of Tohu that fell into this world. And where are the sparks? They're all hidden and concealed inside different vessels that are seemingly unholy and not so not so not so revealed and um connected to the source but really the, that's exactly where the sparks of god's infinite light are hiding and we are all able to release those sparks and have them return to their infinite source which is god by using the vessels, whatever vessel it may be, the physical, actual, material vessel for holiness. And once we do that act of using, let's say, um, let's say money, you have a $5 bill in your pocket. There are sparks of holiness inside that $5 bill in your pocket, and you are able to uplift and return those sparks of holiness to God by using it for holy things. You can use it to buy Shabbat food. You can use it to give to somebody who is in need of tzedakah, charity. And that is the way that we use physical tools in order to complete our mission here in this earth. And there are actually three different klipot, which are um, impurities that are un that are that do not have the spark that needs to be uplifted within them so those are it's idolatry forbidden relations and forbidden foods that we are forbidden to eat so those three different categories are not able to be uplifted because that's not our mission we are not going to find the sparks in those things because there are no sparks in those different categories so it's just a little easier we have a lot less work to do we don't have to focus on those things we can focus on everything else so that brings me to the next point which is technology and understanding how much holiness is inside of the phone that you're on right now or the computer that you're watching this on there is so much holiness inside of it and how do you know how high or low the frequency of the spark that is within a certain vessel is because there's this balance between holiness and unholiness when there's a vessel and a creation in this world there's um there's a way to understand how holy or not holy by seeing how how it is used in an unholy way if it has the power to be used in a very unholy way then it is able to be used in that much more of a holy way so that's how we can understand the grade between holiness and unholiness between the different physical vessels that we are each given in our lives so let's take the phone for example the phone you can either waste your entire day and God forbid, watch things that are toxic for your soul. Or you can use that telephone in your hand, that cell phone, and use it for holiness to bring about the redemption. So <laughs> it's really beautiful and it's amazing. And it's, it's easy to write it off as an un unholy thing that just is a waste of time. But really, it has so much holiness inside of it and it just has a bad rep. And... And we're going to go into the Torah sources now and understand how technology and um, social media specifically has a big part in, in the revelation of the redemption, which is the Geulah Shlema, Mashiach, a time when all negativity and hate and evil will be wiped away, wiped away from the world forevermore. So that is the end game. That's what, what we're all aiming for. That's what we're working towards every single day. That's what we pray for every day. So the cell phone actually is the biggest player, I think, in my, in, in my opinion and many other people's opinion. The cell phone is one of the greatest, greatest players in the revelation of Geo Lashlema. So first of all, there is this holy, holy rabbi and sage, tzaddik, amazing, amazing master, 
named the Baal Shem Tov. His name was Yisrael Baal Shem Tov, and he was brought down into this world to reveal the light of Hasidut. And all Hasidut, all of the different sects of Hasidut come from the Baal Shem Tov. So there's all different kinds. There's the Chabad Hasidim, there's the Satmer Hasidim, there's the Breslov Hasidim. All of them stem from the Hasidut of the Baal Shem Tov. And when he came down into this world, he, re he illuminated the world with so much holiness. And one of the famous stories of the Baal Shem Tov is that he would have a soul ascent very often because he was just from such a high place. His soul, was, his soul was from such a high place. So he would experience soul ascents very often into heaven while he was here on earth. So during one of these soul ascents, that the Baal Shem Tov experienced, he was able to enter into the palace of Mashiach. Mashiach is the, the great redeemer of the Jewish people. And when the redemption will be revealed, it will be because Mashiach will inst institute it. He will make sure that it happens. So the Baal Shem Tov went up into heaven while his feet were still here on the ground and he went to speak to the Mashiach. And he asked the Mashiach one question. What do you guys think he asked him? He asked him, when will Mashiach arrive? When are we going to experience Geulah, redemption? When is it going to happen? And Mashiach told the Baal Shem Tov, when your teachings, the teachings of Hasidut, are spread throughout the entire world like wellsprings, the waters of... of purity and the Torah that he brought to the world are spread throughout the entire world, that is when Mashiach will come. And it's beautiful to realize how much Hasidut is here in this earth on all four corners of the globe because of this beautiful tool that we were given, which is a cell phone. And really it's a very big player in the redemption, the Geula Shlema, because there are people in Timbuktu and South Africa to China to Guatemala who are able to just open up their cell phone and listen either on Spotify or YouTube or Instagram. They're able to hear words of Hasidut that the Baal Shem Tov taught many years ago, hundreds of years ago. So that is one point. And another point is that in the Torah, actually in Isaiah, 11.9, if you're interested in finding out exactly where, you can look up this quote. It says, Ki et Hashem leyam mechasim. When Mashiach comes, when we experience the redemption, the knowledge of God will be covering the earth as the water covers the sea. So there's this clear, clear point of how when we are in the times of the redemption and in order to expedite the redemption, we need to make sure that all of the earth is filled with the knowledge, knowledge of God. And thank God we're able to do that with our cell phones. And another amazing quote is um, from Jeremiah 3133, if you're interested in seeing the entire quote, you can go after this and go look it up. So it says, um, one man will no longer teach his brother, nor a man his colleague, for all will know God. And that's also a beautiful prophecy of when Mashiach comes, when we do experience the redemption, there's almost going to be this, this equality that all people will be able to access God in a very equal way and it's not that people are going to be higher or lower than each other it's going to be that each person is going to learn for themselves and they're going to be able to experience godliness on their own and you can really do that now you don't have to go to um to anywhere in order to learn about God. You're able to literally open up your cell phone, you can look it up on Wikipedia and find out about, you know, what happened during the creation. And it's just amazing. We've never had this before. This is such, such a sign of the redemption in our day and age, thank God. And there's another quote <laughs> for those of you who like the biblical proof of how the cell phones and internet and social media are a sign of the Geula. So 
in Bereshit, in Genesis, in the first book of the Torah, in 49.10. Um, it, it states that, And to Hashem there will be a gathering of all peoples. And this is also um, a sign of the Geulah. It's a sign of the Geulah because when Mashiach comes, there's going to be unity between the entire world and people will be able to connect to one another so easily and so quickly. And it's going to be as if we're just one people with, with one heart, Bezrat Hashem, and it's going to be like this return of unity. And we're able to do that with our cell phones. You can, I'm sure you're part of one or two or three or four WhatsApp group chats. And you're able to connect with hundreds and hundreds of people from around the world. And not only that, I'm sure if you have a social media account, you are able to connect with people that you went to preschool with or high school with and they live somewhere very far away from you now, but you're able to message them in one second. There's no such thing as snail mail anymore. It's like a thing of the past. You can just connect to somebody from across the world in the blink of an eye, in the click of a finger. It's really, it's, it's a sign of the Gila. Okay, and a very special one. You guys uh, might be familiar with the Hallelujah. There's a beautiful thing called the Psalms. The King David wrote a book of Psalms. And the last Psalm that he wrote, which is the book of the Tehilim. So the last parak of Tehilim is Kuf Nun, which is number 150. And towards the end, the last line of the whole Tehilim, the whole book of Tehilim is Kol Haneshama and that literally means that every soul of every creation will come to praise God. And Chazal teach us that what does that mean? It means even inanimate objects are going to praise God and they are going to say how great is God. So even a rock or even, you know, things that you wouldn't expect to be speaking are going to declare God's name and praise Him. And if you think about it, the phone that's in your hand or the computer that's in your hand is just made up of material that is very similar to rock. And it's technically very inanimate, but in today's day and age, it doesn't feel inanimate because you can hear so many words of holiness coming from this thing that could technically be passed as a rock. When, when you turn off your phone, it's considered to be just as the same as a rock. You, you don't see any form of life in it. So when you're on your phone, just think of that. Think of the fact that your phone is at the level of a rock, technically, and it is saying words and praise of God. So that's a very big sign of the Geula. And um, I, want to, I want to end off by inviting all of us to understand how great our power is. And even though you may not have thought of using your social media to, to <laughs> do these kinds of things, you are able to, and God gives you the strength in order to be partners with Him in revealing the redemption. And the phone inside your hand and the computer inside your hand have so much power to bring us to the final Geulah Shlema. And I want to share one quick story that's very, very special to me. That in the beginning, when I first started, when I first started my social media career many, many years ago, I didn't even think that there were people actually watching. I just was doing it because I enjoyed it. And many years later, somebody messaged me and she was this special, amazing, holy tzaddika woman all the way from Prague. And she let me know that she saw some of the content that I posted and she appreciated what I posted so much. And she wanted to invite me to her mikvah ceremony because she was going to convert to become Jewish. And she came to Israel and she came to Israel to convert and experience the, the um, ritual conversion ceremony inside of the mikvah, which is a ritual bath. And she invited me to that ceremony. And was, I, I went to that ceremony and it was the first time that I met her in my entire life. And I just looked at her and I, I hugged her so, so, so tight. And I couldn't believe that 
something so, so seemingly unholy, seemingly, you know, just base and just a material that you just scroll and you go on Instagram. I, it hit me in that moment how powerful the phone in your hand is that someone all the way in Prague could be watching the things that you are putting out there and they could be really inspired and Obviously, the goal is not to convert people, but it just so happened that this tzaddika, this holy, righteous, amazing woman, her neshama, was very connected to the words that I happened to be saying in a movie. I don't even remember what I posted, and I didn't even know. So, although you may not realize how much power, and you might think that it's just, you know, for select few people that have a large following, it doesn't matter how many people follow you on Instagram or on Facebook or on Twitter, it does not matter. If you are able to inspire one person's life, that is the whole world. One person is considered an entire world, and that's everything to a shin. And you're able to change people's lives for the better. So, that's an amazing, awesome po point in my life where I realized how powerful the phone actually is and how powerful Instagram is and Facebook. And also another point, I spoke about this a little bit earlier. I don't know if it got cut off when we got, um, when the live was interrupted, but I wanted to make a point that it's obviously the phone is just a tool and it's called Klipat Noga because it, it, can easily be used for the opposite power, God forbid. But that's why it's very important that when you use your phone to remind yourself that you are using it in order to make a difference for the better in this world. And when, you're, when you do that, and when you remind yourself of that strength that this phone has for the good, then it has no power over you to be used for a negative, action and Bezrat Hashem may we be able to create good content and not spend so much time at all consuming because when there are two ways of using your phone you can either consume everybody else's content and compare your life to theirs and just you know see everything and watch everything which is really able to damage your own self-confidence your own spiritual status your own your own soul it's really able to affect you in a negative way so the the way that we are able to combat that is by creating good content and it doesn't matter if you have any experience or not you are able to because it just takes a little practice and you just got to get started and you'll be amazing at it. And if you want to learn more on how to create content, you can check out my school that I launched for Hashem with Hashem's help. It's called the Shechina Academy. And one of the many different amazing, amazing classes that are on there is about content creation. So if you're interested, you can go check that out and we'll meet there. And also I wanted to end off. We have just a few more minutes. <laughs> two more minutes um that here's just like a few a few relatable ways on how you can use your social media to um to create more holiness in this world so you guys know the swipe up feature or the on on facebook we don't have the swipe up feature but on instagram we do so basically um there's an option to click a link so what i love to do is to post on Fridays the the timing of Shabbat and remind my fellow Jewish women from around the world that they are also able to join every other Jewish woman from around the world in lighting the candles of Shabbat. And then I put the, the link of when Shabbat starts for the person's specific location. I just put it right into that little link and then anyone who sees it is able to click it and go find out what time Shabbat is and find out what the blessing is and able to bring more light into this world spiritually and physically actually into their life and for those of you who are um, men you can put on tefillin you can post a picture of you putting on tefillin and you can invite your other fellow men to Jewish Jewish uh, friends to put on to fill in and remind them about that beautiful mitzvah and there are just so many so many amazing ways you can post a picture before Shabbat and say like Shabbat Shalom all of these little posts 
can make such a great impact. And I want to bless all of us to be able to use our phones for holiness and to bring about the Geula Shlema and bring about so much light into this world with success, in good health and happiness. And Bezrat Hashem, you never know how great the impact you can make will be until you try it. So love you guys. Mashiach now. <laughs>